Welcome back, fellow humans, to the Scrub Lord channel. Thank you for being here. Today we got a bit of a special video. Got my boy Nolan. Nolan, say hi. Hello. Frequent guest of the Scrub Lord channel. You know, over there on the Nerds Cantos podcast we do, which this is basically that. But it's a little different, because we don't have any Stewie with us, because Stewie has not read the topic of today's video. Mm -hmm. Which... Getting into it, we're talking about Mistborn, book one, The Final Empire, slash kind of just The Cosmere, because I forced my friends to start reading The Cosmere, and Nolan here is the most far ahead, uh, you know, uh, most <laughs> far read, I guess you could say. So we're reviewing all the books, episode by episode, because why not? Yeah, we're not sitting down and making a six-hour video. That, no, that'd be yeah. Little... We would, yep, that'd be a long time. Just like that Spider-Man video we made that was like three hours. We're not doing that. I don't remember that. I don't know. I mean, it was late at night. You know, it was like midnight while yeah, we were doing that Spider-Man video. That was, yeah. I don't want to spend my 1 a.m. listening about the Clone Saga. <laughs> yeah, not a great idea. But we will spend our 6 p.m.s talking about Mistborn Spider. the Final Empire. That's right. That's damn right. So, Something better than Spider-Man comics. So, uh, yeah, I, maybe. Yes. <laughs> and they are better than that. Every Cosmere is probably better than most Spider-Man comics. But uh, where do we want to start? Well, the very beginning. The first page. <laughs> no. Um, You're right. I do, I do know where we should start, actually. Okay. I'm on the wiki. We should start off by saying this book was published by Tor. On July 17th, 2006, it is roughly around 541 pages. Oh, really? I thought it was longer. Yep. Uh, nope. That's the paperback edition slash hardback as well. And the mass market version is 647 pages. Ooh. So there's that. And this is the second book in the Cosmere as a whole. Elantris is technically the first one, but we'll get to that later. Um, so that's that. That's when the book came out. I don't know. I don't know where to go. Pretty, where should we, yeah. pretty old. It is. An, it is well, an old book. to us, I guess. Yeah, in we relation been, to our lifespan. We would have been wee little babies, you could say. We little, little lads, children. Little so, yeah, toddlers, we would, we would not have understood this. Not at all. No. A um, little bit. So actually talking about the book, I read it, I think, in 2020. And then you, Nolan, you just you just listened to it like two months ago. Uh, it was like it was before Christmas break. Mm -hmm. I think I started it around November or okay. October. I don't remember. So yeah, you're newer. All right, I've got a little bit of an old look on it. Uh, mm -hmm. But it's a great book, right? I think Fantastic. we can start with that. Fantastic book. Was this a good introduction to the Cosmere for you? I think, think? so. I think the Final Empire is the perfect book to open up with because mm -hmm. I feel like if you start with the Launchers, you're going to get fucking confused. I don't know if you'd get confused, but I don't you'd think get lost. That's what I mean. I, I feel think... like you there'd be a lot of shit going on. You think so? I don't know. I I I don't think it'd be that bad. I think starting with Mistborn though works better because there's three of them, and mm -hmm. then by the end of I, we should say, by the way, spoilers for Mistborn Book 1. Uh, and we'll, I guess we'll try not to spoil for the other two. But, like, you know, the thing I'm about to say is kind of spoilery for 2 and 3. So, like, you know. But, like, by the end of 3, you kind of start learning about shards and other planets that, you know, you kind of get the hint that there's more mm -hmm. stuff going on. So it makes more sense when you then drop into Elantris where you're like, okay, it's a new planet. Whereas starting with Elantris and then going to Mistborn would probably feel odd because you're like, what the fuck? Like, how does this connect in any way, you know? Yeah. So, Magic yeah, I think, systems being different. Yeah, way different. And... The planets being complete. Yeah, like, I, I think Mistborn's definitely the perfect start. You get three solid standalone books that don't really have much Cosmere crossover. Mm -hmm. And then you can, you can dig deeper after that. Yeah. Especially in the first book, there's... Nothing. I, nothing. Uh, yeah. I mean, you learned the magic systems of Scadrial and yeah. It's just like a fantasy book. You're just reading uh, the first fantasy book in like a trilogy. You're not reading like a universe spanning epic with like ten different planets that matter. 
Mm -hmm. And it's an interesting type of fantasy, too. Because it's not like spell slinging or dragons and... Like, it's not D&D fantasy. Yeah. You know, Lord of the Ringsy. It's like, it's very grim dark. I, honestly, I know it is a fantasy slash sci-fi universe thing. Mm-hmm. But I feel like it's in its own little pocket. Because mm. I feel like if I say it's a fantasy thing, it kind of, people I don't like. You know, they get an uh, idea. They get an yeah. image in their head. They think Lord of the Rings. They think D&D. They think colorful, you know. You know, fantasy. wizards and stuff, which you're not going to get in Mistborn. I mean, it's still definitely fantasy, but you have to, when you're mm-hmm. pitching it to someone, you got to explain. That's the hardest part. I um, had this it, lady think? come into work, and she actually started talking uh, about it. Mm-hmm. And she had Way of Kings, but hasn't read Mistborn. Okay. And um, I think you can read The Way of Kings, but then you get to Words of Radiance, and then you're just like, what the fuck? Yeah. Because then in, people start coming. And, I mean, I think, you yeah. can, I think you can read them all, but... I, I feel like you'd be asking a lot of questions. Life. You are asking a lot of questions. Uh I don't know. I think Stormlight does a decent job. I mean, that's not what we're here to talk about, but I think Stormlight does a. I mean, you won't get like the glup shittos. You're not gonna know yeah. who Hoyt is. You're not gonna. You're like you're not gonna understand like why that's a big thing. You're not gonna. Uh, you know when all the other characters, all their glup shittos. Okay, yeah. yeah. When the other things happen in, in Stormlight, you're not gonna get that. But for the most part, the story of Stormlight, you'll be fine with. I wouldn't start with Stormlight though. That book's fucking big. It's that large. Too big. Oh, not too big. Oh. It's as big as it needs to be. But it is a chunk. It's a fucking commitment. Yeah, Mistborn definitely is best start. And honestly, I think Warbreaker would be the other thing. I if I if I were to get yeah. people into it, I think Warbreaker is a solid. Warbreaker like, would be easy to hop into. Yeah, because that doesn't have any other connection. Like you don't need. There's no connections. It's just a one-off too. So you kind of get this world. Mm-hmm. You don't need to work else. But Mistborn that- overall, for sure, the best the best way to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you got your trilogy you know. all completed. Yeah, you got your trilogy, it's all done. You got your sequels, you know, if you want, you know, Era 2 and stuff. So there's more. A lot of stuff there. Um, actual book. How do we want I don't know how we want to do this. I don't know either. Because um, I don't want to run it down. But. I got gotcha. you. Um, well, I, I do want to mention this. When I first started reading it last semester, what really hooked me was the first fight scene, um, which isn't too far in the book. Um, I got the prologue and then like the first and second chapter. And then old boy Kelsey or one of the POVs goes, and yeah, fucks shit up with a paperweight. And it's just like, Oh my <laughs> yeah. God. Cause I have, I'm be honest. Um, so I, I mainly listen to audiobooks cause I'm brain dead and I'm always busy going places and doing things, multitasking. So it's just all around easier and more efficient for me. But I thought I was watching a fucking movie because I was sitting outside my math class waiting. Or no, not my math class. I got out of math class. I was sitting waiting for another class. And that scene starts playing and it's going in about explaining all these, um, how, what were they called? Haze killers. People yeah. that like fight Mistborns. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know. Did we, did we even explain the magic system? I mean, I, I, suppose, I suppose we can get into it but you, you mentioned something that i do want to get into a little bit but i guess so for those who don't know uh f- first of all what are you doing go read the mistborn but we've already kind of mentioned spoilers will be here get the fuck out of here but if you're gonna stay this morning is set on a, the planet known as scadriel <clears throat> where it rains mist pretty much like every day the moon is red you know this planet's fucked basically is what i'm trying to say this place sucks ass covered in ash yeah or ash it's not mist my bad and then there's mist just sort of around um it's real misty during the- yeah and then there's this guy named the lord ruler who's as these are words directly out of brandon samson this is how he pitched it what if the bad guy won right like that's what the lord ruler is he's like the the evil fantasy adventurer guy the bad guy wins and it's about a series like way later of characters being like well now we got to beat the bad guy right uh, so that's kind of what's going on. And then the magic system 
which who boy uh so there's a bunch of metals and you can you know if you drink like the flakes of the metals you can burn them and then they give you sort of different powers and the name mistborn is someone who can use all of the metals and all of the powers and they're all super unique and different and i just read the book that's a lot of explaining and i don't want to do it Mm -hmm. just know they're cool and Very people could cool. kill you with a paperweight or a coin, as they frequently do. Uh, but then the thing you mentioned, because you said you don't really read many books, Nolan. You're, mm-hmm. you're not as well-versed in the, the fantasy genre. I just wanted to mention that I am the complete opposite, as shown by the videos on this channel. I read lots of books. But that being said, this book is still super unique. I think all of the Cosmere are unique and worth reading, even if you've read a gajillion other fantasy novels. I just wanted to mention that. Still worth a shot. Because mm-hmm. uh, it's not very tropey. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. it's, you know, there's some twists, there's some turns. The action is well done. A lot of explanation. Everything yeah. that happens, it's not because you're not going to get like, oh, it's magic. It's magic. Yeah, and that's it's... why magic can do it. You're going to get some crazy explanation because all of the magic systems have some sort of scientific properties mm-hmm. or like a basis that makes it semi believably explainable. Yeah. Like uh, in fiction, you can explain it and you're like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. The, the term is a hard magic system. There are hard rules. Oh. Yeah, uh, there's soft magic systems, or there are hard magic systems. Soft is something like, you know, say D&D, where it's just like, I want to shoot a ball of fire out of my hand, and it's like, yeah, you can do that whenever. You know, but then you look at Mistborn, and it's like, okay, well, you need metals, and metals run out, and then if you run out of metals, you can't use your magic anymore, so now you got to get more metals. Mm-hmm. And then also, like, you're never going to catch, you know, a tin burner who can, like, see better. You're never going to catch him also being, like, super powerful for no reason. Like, that's just not going to happen because that would break the rules and that, you know, doesn't happen. And it's real cool. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I feel like it's weird to talk about the book because it's like, what do we say about it? Yeah, it's cause just so good. I, it's so great, and I don't really want to. I know we spoiled a couple things, and yeah, I don't want to. The two people know? that will watch this, yeah. You know? Hey, hey. Oh, you're Kevin right. You're right. We're we're going. We're cooking. We're cooking. We're cooking up. We're cooking, <laughs> cooking. up. Yeah. You're cooking. I don't know though. Like, I, it's like, I guess we could talk about the characters. You know, um, mm. who is your favorite character from the S- first? Sazed. Sazed. Okay. I love Sazed and I love all of the dialogue. Because throughout the first book, Sazed's kind of Vin, um, who's the MC, kind of like her guardian in a way. Mm-hmm. Like the chaperone, yeah. like always making sure, Ayo, Vin, let's not fucking die, you know? I really like Definitely. him. But he's, um, <sighs> What, what, what were they called? Parshman? Not Parshman. No, uh, Terrace. Terraceman. Terraceman. That's it. They're like um, Middle Eastern-y sort of thing. Um, I think that's what they're based off of, uh, right? I, or like maybe? Egyptian-y. I don't know. You they're, know, they're brown. Like they're you know they're not. But like their whole yeah, um, and then their culture is like yeah yeah yeah. I think I don't know. Here, um, we could probably that. flop up a picture of like Sazed or something, like his his garb. Sazed. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. Or there will be photos yeah. on screen. Kind of looking monkey. I'm not sure what they're based on. Now I'm looking it up. What in the world? I looked up a Google image, and I've got Sazed, and then below Sazed is Hatsune Miku. What? Um, that's a bit odd. I found I... this post that says Sanderson based their religion on uh, Judaism and uh, the Jewish culture. Really? So yeah, I don't know. If, I you know I don't know necessarily if that dictates whatever, but I, it does mention something though. Bringing that up, 
one thing Sanderson, I think, excels at is, like, making cultures. Mm. He doesn't, like, write languages. Like, Tolkien, you know, Elvish is a language you can learn in a college class because Tolkien made a real language. Like, Sanderson doesn't do that. But he makes well-defined cultures with their own religions and beliefs and fun words, they say. Accents, too. Yeah, they have they, accents. They do a good, good job explaining that so you can visualize how they sound. Yeah. Imagine. It's yeah, and I I always like that about Sanderson books. Is you're always gonna get a, f- a bunch of new cultures and stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, so your favorite mm-hmm. character says that I really liked Ellen because he's a nerd who reads books. Mm-hmm. He's a little nerdy boy. He's a little nerdy person. guy who reads books at parties, and I was like, oh wait a minute, yeah, hold up, <laughs> that's me. <laughs> um, I, I'm obviously Vin's solid. I don't know. It's really hard to like. I don't know what to talk about here. I thought we would go into this video and we'd be like, we immediately, you know, we're good. But I'm like, shit. I don't. Do you have any cons? Do you have any problems with the first Mistborn book? <sighs> I've been thinking ever okay. since about 20 minutes ago when you All were right. like, we need we, pros we and cons. Yeah. I can't think of a con necessarily. Um. Uh, Let's see. Let me thunk. Let me, let me. I don't know. Yeah, it beats, beats me. I don't really have any cons. It's been a while since I've read this book. Obviously, I haven't read it since 2020, but I don't remember having any cons when I read it. And I also read it in a day, <laughs> uh, which just goes to show how much I liked it. Because I, I picked him up and I went, oh, what is this? What are these Mistborn books? What are these? And then I consumed so quickly. <laughs> I read one, like, I finished the trilogy in three days, basically. <laughs> uh, so I don't really, I do have some issues with book two, which we'll get to in the second part of this series. But I don't really have any, like, you know, oh, this is bad in book one. Yeah. I think I've... if I had to reach, like, it kind of takes a minute to get like Vin sort of palling around with the group. Like, I feel like it kind of takes a minute to get the MC like situated, you know, mm. I don't really think it's a problem, but like, I feel on reread, I might have an issue with that. Like if I were to reread it, I'd be like, okay, whatever. But the first All right, little homeless fine. girl. Come yeah, on. Yeah. Like, Hurry up. A badass. Okay. Uh, but I don't know. I don't really have any cons. And yeah. we've been talking pros this entire time. It's just super well written. Um, I will say Sanderson isn't the craziest writer. Like writing wise, is I, I would never say his writing is bland, but it's not like like you're not going to get any crazy prose or like insane descriptions you'd never see from another author. You know, Sanderson's just like solid. And he can do action scenes really well, mm-hmm. and characters as well. I think that's the big characters thing. amazing. He do a okay, really yeah. good subtle romance as well. Yeah, he does good romances. It does. Uh, Ellen and Vin. That's good Ellen's, stuff right there. That's a real good romance. I really like um, Stormlight romance is great. The yeah. Elantris romance is great. Right. The Warbreaker like romance is great. Yeah, like he does good romances. He does good characters. <laughs> His plots are always interesting. They uh, always, yeah. They always sneak up on you. you you're, oh you're yeah, sh- we. This very, book. Does this book have a Sander Lance? You think? Uh, yeah. The entire yeah. end of the book. That's what do fair. you mean? They all have Sander Lanches. <laughs> it has a goddamn Sander Lanch. Hit me like a mace. Yeah, Sanderson does that thing. He's always the ending is like. The book could be going at 20, and then the ending is at 60. You know, you're just like, what the fuck is going on? Like, it gets insane. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I love it. Yeah, and I think that first book, you get a taste of one of the just a, an amazing Sander Lynch. I really like I the think first so, book, yeah. Sander Lynch. Yeah. Personally, the, the Lord Ruler I thing. like it more. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Let's see. Which Sander Lynch do I like that more than? Out of yeah, what Sander Lynch, huh? Hold on, I'm thinking. I, I think I like it more than book two, Sander Lynch. Okay. Book two, Sander Lynch is amazing. Yeah. Interesting. 
But I think it it fucking got me more. Yeah, I think the Sandy Lynch in this is really good with like Kelsier and that whole situation. And Kelsier is great. We haven't mentioned Kelsier yet. Fantastic mentor character. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and he is very important to the rest of the Cosmere. The survivor. Yeah, the survivor. He's very, very important guy, which we'll we'll talk about. But I have I have a fun little thing I want to read here. <clears throat> so this is a review from the Washington Post. Oh, it's, on, what? it's on Wikipedia. Uh, it's just a little short quote, but it says, "Quote: Sanderson's characters aren't particularly well developed, and the Alamancy sometimes feels like a video game trick. But he has created a fascinating world here, and one that deserves a sequel." Fuck you mean a video game trick? I don't, you know. No, I don't know. I'm not sure. I just thought it's funny that we're out here praising the magic and characters, and then this Washington Post review is like, I don't know. So oh, you cut out for me. Uh, I was just saying, um, Discord am I right, viewers? But uh I was just making fun of the guy and his <laughs> his review. Silly little guy. It's a silly little review. And then also here, in January of 2010, Sanderson asked to the Mistborn books to Palpopa Studios uh, so they could make a movie about it. But they never did anything with it. So in 2014, the rights went back to Sanderson. And apparently in October of 2016, he gave the rights to the entire Cosmere universe to DMG Entertainment. And on January 27th, 2017, Deadline Hollywood reported that DMG signed F. Scott Frazier as the screenwriter for the Mistborn movie. That has clearly not gone anywhere, because uh, that was 2017, and we still don't have a Mistborn movie, so I don't know what happened there. But we got Fortnite skin, though. Let's go! We do have a Fortnite skin that will never come back to Fortnite, uh, which is it's a bit sad. It's a bit it's sad that we'll never get it. Yeah. Kind of sucks. Oh, I don't like it. Oh, that's some cool season say, art. We have anything else? You don't have anything else you want to say about Miss Born One? Uh, there's always another secret. All right, always, always, always. another always. secret. Um, okay. If that's if that's all we got to say, we can end the video right here. Mm -hmm. Very short. Thanks for watching. If you did, I don't know why you would, but thanks. Uh, you got anything? Any any last remarks you want to say, Nolan? Nope. Okay. Goodbye. Thanks for watching. Fellow, thanks for watching, Bye. fellow humans, and goodbye.